What is it about video game headshots that make them so satisfying? Well, as their evolution shows, it's a range of things. The sight of a head blown to smithereens by your bullet, the bragging rights of wiping your opponent's head off, or the creatively bloody animations of exploding heads. First and foremost, though, successful headshots demand precision and skill, both of which feel great when executed. GoldenEye 007 Arriving in the mid-90s at a time when the first-person shooter was still in its infancy, the N64 GoldenEye 007 is as seminal as they come. A shooter confidently laying the blueprint for cinematic realism. Atypical of frantic run-and-gun-like shooters or the arcade sensibilities of on-rail shooters a la Time Crisis. Instead, delivering a game with clinical gunplay. And part of the clinical appeal to players was a newfound ability to shoot at specific body parts, with an enemy's head emerging as an uber-satisfactory target with which to aim the free-moving on-screen crosshairs. Whilst not the first game in history to offer headshots, it certainly raised their status as a demanding skill, owing in no small part to the player who achieves the most headshots during a multiplayer bout being bestowed as most professional. House of the Dead 2 1996 original House of the Dead deployed an on-screen targeting reticule to aid players as they blast limbs off of lurching zombies. 2002's House of the Dead 3's glinting bullet impact animations, while certainly impressive looking, were a tad distracting as their on-body muzzle flashes took players' eyes away from the gory details. 1998's House of the Dead 2 is one that nailed the balance. Shredding extremities off of the undead required precision with the players visually stimulated by flailing bloody viscera. Headshots especially felt supremely satisfying. Shooting an enemy squarely between the eyes and blasting their head clean off was a marker of skill. But anything off-center looked fantastic too, with exploding bits and skull and brain blowing chunks off the sides of zombie heads. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis the year is 1999, and headshotting the undead is now a staple tactic for survival thanks to Capcom's marquee horror series. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis ramps up the blood-splattering action compared to its predecessors, but also offers players grislier details to savor in the process. Blood-red holes of gaping bullet wounds are now visible on zombie faces, giving pretty rewarding and informative visual feedback to the player as targeting the head is the most surefire way to survive. Enough shots will blast the head clean off, but it's perhaps the game's zombie dogs that provide the most exhilarating thrill. Shoot one of these guys straight between the eyes and the poor mutt will explode. Half-Life 2 The shooting mechanics were handled a little more thoughtfully in Valve Masterpiece Half-Life, a game rightfully praised back in 1998 for its graphical prowess and tactile sound design. By the time of its successor's 2004 release, hitboxes were growing increasingly refined, with enemy body parts now programmable to consider the defensive capability of armor and helmets, with exposed body parts yielding stronger damage potential. The shooting might feel primitive compared to modern standards, but headshots in Half-Life 2 were an unprecedented challenge at the time, with a direct hit to an enemy's cranium not always resulting in one-shot death. Gears of War Arriving at a time when ultra-competitive online FPS multiplayer was surging in popularity, Gears of War offered skillful marksmen a chance to prove just how much better they were than their opponents by decapitating them from 150 yards. Save for a handful of FPS titles, headshots were largely portrayed as a novelty and despite Unreal Tournament's headshot kill sound popularizing the headshot, it also undermined the skill required. Come 2005's Gears of War, players who managed to strike an opponent in the skull with the long-shot sniper rifle were rewarded with a nifty plus 175 points, acknowledging the ability of the player. Importantly, headshots delivered an exceedingly visceral exploding head animation too, complete with blood pumping out of a headless torso as it stands motionless before stumbling to the ground. Borderlands 2 
The Borderlands series doesn't take itself too seriously. Instead, it toys with the tropes of a first-person shooter despite guns handling with tactile prowess. Famously, 2012's Borderlands 2 toned down the gore of its predecessor with a gore toggle, later added by Gearbox to appease fans' demand for bloody headshots. What remains is gunplay akin to the skillful, methodical feel established in militarized shooters. Player satisfaction is attained through trial and error with the game's bazillion guns and rifles. Landing on a sniper rifle befitting of your playstyle, perhaps between bouts of close quarter gunplay, is supremely enjoyable. Max Payne 3 Never has a shooter oozed as much style as the Max Payne series. Rockstar Studios' 2012 title offers a raft of stylish gunplay mechanics, including the Hollywood-esque shoot-dodge mechanic, complete with the ability to fire dual-wield pistols mid-air, plus exceptional slow-mo bullet time mechanic, giving players the chance to deftly place each shot between the eyes of their enemies. Replenishing bullet times is a skill-based affair too. The more opponents that are wiped out by expertly placed headshots, the faster the gauge refills. It's an engaging, addictive gameplay loop, topped off by the slow motion kill cam, whereby the projectile that brought the final opponent's demise is tracked for players to savor. Max Payne 3 turned the headshots into a cinematic art form. Fallout 4 The vault tech assisted targeting systems first introduced in Fallout 3 makes a welcome return in Fallout 4, albeit majorly slowing down time rather than freezing it as in its predecessor. This subtle change establishes an unhindered sense of flow, with VATs now presented much more cinematically. Fallout 4's gore is gratuitously overdone too, with so many brutal headshot animations zoning in on flailing jawbones and eye sockets amidst the torrents of airborne blood meaning targeting the head never gets boring. Worth special mention here is the sadistically squelchy sound design too, slowed down to soggy grumble. The oral and visual stimulants presented means it's difficult not to target heads every time Vats is engaged. Sniper Elite 4 Tactical shooter Sniper Elite 4 does away with close quarters combat, instead tasking players with rifling down opponents from a distance. When shooting from far away, it'd be easy to feel dispassionate towards a kill. Deaths are just another number to the cold clinical sniper. However, the Sniper Elite series builds an undeniable connection between shooter and enemy via its X-ray kill cam. In slow motion, the in-game camera will track the trajectory of a bullet from the barrel of the rifle to the target's point of impact, cinematically peeling the skin back to show the anatomically correct bones and body organs inside whilst they're fatally ruptured and exploded. For headshots, the round, sounding like a jet engine as it laser beams towards an enemy's helmet before impact, showcases mega, detailed entry and exit wounds, with bits of brain squeezing through cracked skull simultaneously encouraging players to feel some sort of emotion towards the soldier they just killed, while also providing ultra-satisfying movie-like death animations. The Last of Us Part 1 You're gonna nice pay for that. The Last of Us Part 1 features some of the most brutal combat encounters ever seen in video games. Headshots especially are savage, ripping flesh right off the face of the infected in action sequences that are grounded in realism rather than the gratuitous gore seen in other games on this rundown. The realistic savagery portrayed in the original has carried over, of course. And with it, gunshot impacts that feel unsettlingly powerful, especially when shotgunning a clicker in the face. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.